an earlier time, building, design and construction was a single discipline. 200 years ago, there were no architects and engineers. It was one profession. Mumbai was fine. I was away after that uh, at university and uh, working in Paris. So when I came back in 56, I lived in Uma Park, which is on Warden Road. It was a comfortable city to live in. Traveling by bus was easy. I used to go to work in Chimbur by bus. That was fine. During my father's term, they extended the island of Mumbai into the suburbs and became Greater Bombay. My father started one of those schemes, a JVPD scheme, and uh, it was blank at that time, it was a swamp. The idea of the Urban Land Sealing Act was that um, land should be taken away from landowners. All open land should be taken away by government at modest rates and uh, used for housing for lower income people. Builders assembled plots. They got people to sell plots to them saying, well, look, your plot is useless, you can't build for poor people, so please sell it to us. They bought a lot of land, aggregated it, and then developed schemes which were in fact not low-income housing. When the municipality published its first development plan in 1964, it showed the map of Greater Bombay, which stopped dead at the boundary. We published an article then suggesting that New Bombay be taken up as a planned development. Whether you like it or not, it's going to develop eastwards. If you make it a planned development, it will develop much better and it will be self-financing. Srinivasan was a remarkable person. He got onto the train when he found that the chief minister was traveling to Nagpur. Cornered the chief minister, had two uninterrupted hours with him and convinced him that the new Bombay project should happen. He asked me if I would take charge of the planning work and I said fine. And that's how New Bombay started. We envisioned it as a series of nodes along a transit line, like railway stations. You'd have a varying skyline, which is interesting for the city. You'd have more people close to the station within walking distance. And the motor car owning public would be at the perimeter, away from the crowded nodal centers. In one of its basic premises, it succeeded. From development of land and sale of land, we would realize enough money to finance all the urban infrastructure, not only the physical, you know, water supply, sanitation, drainage and so on, but also social infrastructure, schools, hospitals, everything could be financed out of the proceeds from the sale of land. We had decided that if you want to avoid slums in New Bombay, you must provide housing across the entire spectrum of income groups in proportion to their numbers in the population. So you have an income profile of the city, you know what, how many people there are in each income group, and you provide land and housing for that income group accordingly with a cross subsidy. Land is cheaper for the poorer people, more expensive for the wealthier. And it could be completely self sustaining. In the early days, Sidco built enough low income housing according to this formula, but that has declined over the years. They've built less and less housing for the lower income groups. It takes it that one of its functions is to monetize land. This is rubbish. Land is, is public property. It's held in trust for the public. It's to be put to the best possible use for the public. The emergency had just happened. And that was like entering a dark tunnel. We never saw the end of it. I thought it would never end. One didn't know what the future held. Because all kinds of people were being put in jail for all sorts of things. Danger of centralization of power, Misuse of power was very apparent and strong at that time. Tenders were invited for a design come construction bid for the Kemp's Corner flyover. So we designed this flyover as an arch bridge. An arch bridge needs solid rock foundations because that holds the arch in place. Had we known initially that there was no rock here, we would never have designed an arch. It took us a week to really get rid of the idea of the arch and come up with what we have at present. And that is a pre stress span with overhangs. But we wanted to preserve that U-turn. We were able to do that. Because you have to have some foresight and some planning which goes into a city. You can't just let it happen. And one of the worst things that's happening to us today is that there is no plan for any city at all, in a small town or large. Land can be made available in a variety of ways. And we must understand that basically developers do not want more land to be made available. I think that's just uh, another way of storing black money. If you have cash, what do you do with it? Money being in the cupboard, 
in the form of notes that might be demonetized, you have it in flats.